Hello, welcome to Reflections. I'm your girl, Nadine Edwards. Thank you for joining. Today, I want to share a personal experience with you that happened two Fridays ago. This experience made me realize more than ever before that God cannot say no when we pray with conviction. Whatever the situation, you name it, whether it be a medical situation, financial, social, spiritual, whatever it is, once we claim what we need from God by faith, He cannot help but show up. I am not talking about prayers with a hint of doubt. I'm talking about fully knowing in your spirit it is done. Thursday the 4th of January, a sudden text message came in on my phone from my driving instructor. And it read, There's a possibility for a test tomorrow, 15 something. Not sure, we need to talk with TUV. Would you be available? 15 something is army time to me after 3 p.m. And TUV is the government office that deals with driver's license. I was instantly nervous, I have to say. Tomorrow? Not even a date with a three-day notice? So I've been doing practical lessons with this driving school and now the moment has come to face that examiner who will determine whether or not I get a German driver's license. So here are the reasons I felt a little nervy. For one, the test was going to be in the German language. And my concern was, will I understand this man's accent? And if I don't, I cannot carry out his directives. What if I don't remember the German names for the controls in the car, which I have to point out before I actually start the practical part of the exam? Was the exam going to be on a route that was not familiar to me? All these things were running through my mind. And then the weather suddenly changed that day. It was snowing and raining at the same time. I needed to provide an answer quickly because practical exam dates in Hamburg go fast. So I looked up and said, God, what do you think? Then the thought came to me. Why procrastinate? Do you know what the future holds? The longer you wait, chances are you'll forget the important things you need to remember for the exam. This little moment lasted one minute. Then I texted back. Okay, I will go for it. Ladies and gentlemen, I could not sleep that night. I went to bed at 10.30 and by 1.30 a.m. I was up and could not go back to sleep. For those of you who know me, you know that I have been driving for many years. I drove some years in Jamaica and also some years in the U.S. But what concerned me also was that the road infrastructure in Germany is more complex than these countries, especially in the cities. I have seen drivers made wrong turns, put on indicators to turn on one-way street. <laughs> so it's a little complex and you have to pay attention to the signs ahead of time. So my problem was not so much maneuvering the vehicle. My instructor said I was good with that. My problem was that I needed to see the signs ahead of time to be able to reduce my speed within a certain limit, to remember not to pass a parked bus at normal speed because not slowing down can possibly fail you in an exam because a child or anybody could be coming from the bus and become endangered. So if you're driving at 40 kilometers in a 30 zone, especially if it's a residential area and or an area that has a school, that can fail you in an exam. So can one be fully ready? No, because mistakes can happen. The question is, is that mistake or are those mistakes major enough to fail you? Now the day of the exam came, Friday the 5th of January, and the instruction was to be at the office of the driving school 30 minutes before the exam start time, which was going to be 3.30 p.m. The distance to the school is about 20 minutes walk. And so while I was walking, I began praying, and these were my exact words. Lord, Today, I'm asking you for a yes. It doesn't matter what the examiner thinks about the test. I am asking you for a yes. 2024 is going to be a year of yeses, Lord. Chances are I will make mistake, but you know at the end of the day, I can drive. And I've been driving for many years. So it doesn't matter what happens today. I'm claiming a yes. Lord, please choose the right instructor. Proverbs 21 verse 1 says, The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord, and as the rivers of water, he turneth it wheresoever he will. Turn this man's heart towards me, Lord. 
operate through him. Let me understand his accent. Let him be the right one. Operate through me too, Lord. And then I said, Lord, if you operate through him and you operate through me, how can you tell yourself no? <laughs> it sounded funny in the moment, but those were my exact words. If you operate through him and you operate through me, how can you tell yourself no? I said, Lord, remember what you did for me in the past. Do you remember that time, Lord, when I had those exams? When I was doing those four subjects that I needed to matriculate into university? I prayed for a one in math, distinction, the best. I prayed for a two in English because at the time I felt like I was not articulate enough. So I was being fear. I asked you for a one in principles of business. And I asked you for a one in office procedure. And I remember at the time, I opened my Bible to Matthew 21, verse 22, which says, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Ladies and gentlemen, if God is going to get glory, he's not going to allow you to show off at the end of the day about anything that you have done. I remember going to all those exams and I wasn't finished. I remember when the invigilator said, Time! I was just over three quarters of the paper finished. And God gave me exactly what I asked for. He gave me exactly what I believed him in faith for. Thank you for the yes, Lord, on this day, the 5th of January, 2024. I said, Lord, that's 12. 12 represents the 12 tribes of Israel. I said, Lord, that represents a nation. I said, Lord, all of heaven is coming with me today. And just when I said that, there was a peace that came over me with the assurance that everything was going to be okay. When I got to the office, I greeted the two ladies at the front desk and sat down. They knew I was waiting for my instructor, who was on the road with another student. Shortly after, the owner of the school walked in and spoke briefly with one of the administrators. And while he was on his way out, he gave me two thumbs up and said, You got this. The instructor you have today is a cool guy. You can do it. Just do what you're supposed to do. Then my instructor eventually showed up within the time took me to the starting point of the exam. Then the examiner showed up shortly after. First thing he said, may I see your ID? Showed it to him. And then he sat in the back of the car and said, Miss Edwards, before we move off, um, I'm gonna ask you to point out certain controls to me. I know he was speaking in German, of course. For the first two questions, I was blank. <laughs> Tried to guess, but just didn't remember. Of course, he showed them to me. And then by the third and onwards, my thoughts began flowing. So two, I forgot, and the other three, I was able to point out. And of course, when he asked me about the hazard light, it's called the Warnungslicht, or the Warnlicht, I was able to tell him the purpose of that light. He asked, when do you use it? And I was able to give him the three reasons. When we got to the end point, or the final destination of the exam, I parked the car, and he said to me, Miss Edwards, was your driving perfect? No. You didn't remember the controls in the beginning and you did this. And he and my instructor started deliberating. They took all things into consideration, even the weather and everything. And while they were deliberating, I was praying in my spirit. I said, God, it doesn't matter what they're saying. It is a yes. I said, thank you for the yes. And after they deliberated, the examiner paused for a few seconds. Then he said, you passed. Danke schön. Thank you. What's your name again? Herr Schmidt. Herr Schmidt. Danke. I was so happy. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea how much of a big deal this was for me. You have no idea. I never felt so happy when I got my Jamaican driver's license. I never felt so happy when I got the American driver's license. God is good. Forgot to get the glory. He had to allow those mistakes to be highlighted for me to realize that he was really working on my behalf. He had to show me that, hey, you're not perfect, but I got you. Years ago, when I was doing those exams, the invigilator said, time, and I wasn't finished, but God got the glory. One of the things I want us to take away today is that we build our faith when we turn to God first, when we have problems or when we are in trouble or whatever the case may be. You get God to smile when you do this. First, Tell him what he already knows, that he is the sovereign God of this universe, 
who is in control of all things and all people. Use scripture. Colossians 1 verses 16 and 17 says, For by you were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by you and for you. And you are before all things, and by you all things consist. Ladies and gentlemen, everything consists by God's word. Whatever he says manifests. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. This very earth hangs on God's word. Here's what Job 26 verse 7 says. He stretched out the north over the empty space and hung it the earth upon nothing. He hung it the earth on nothing. It is God's word that is holding up this earth. Verse 3 of Hebrews 1 says, He upholds the universe by the word of his power. Do you understand the power of God's word? Give him permission to speak into your life. Invite him to speak into your situation. Because Psalm 33 verse 6 says, By the word of God were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Verses 8 and 9 says, Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Do you understand the powerful God that you serve? Do you understand the power that he has made available to you? God loves it when we use scripture to make reference because it means therefore that we are coming into agreement with the authority of his word. Then make reference to what he has done in the past like the psalmist did, whether in your life or in the life of others. I was able to make reference to my past. Here's what the psalmist wrote in Psalm 44 verses 1 to 6. We have heard it with our ears, O God. Our ancestors have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand you drove out the nations and planted our ancestors. You crushed the peoples and made our ancestors flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. You are the king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. Through you we push back our enemies. Through your name we trample our foes. I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. Let us underline verse 6 for a moment. I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. They spoke in a language that was prevalent for them at the time. Today we can say, Lord, I put no trust in my education. I put no trust in my talent. When I sing, I get standing ovation, but that cannot save me. 